Hi, welcome to another episode of Very Delta. This is a podcast where I look gorgeous, I speak extemporaneously, and I invite guests to sit on the couch and tell me things. I don't know what things exclusively, but things. Today on Very Delta, we talk about this heat. It is not my friend. We also sit down with Detox and talk about being a fashion queen and home ownership. We also answer some questions about embarrassing times on stage. Very Delta is the podcast for the woman who still has rewards cards on her keychain. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. Hello, my gorgeous listeners and spectators. Welcome back to another episode of Very Delta. I'm very excited to be here today. We have a very extra, extra special guest that I'm so excited about. You love her to pieces. And uh, so I'm excited to interview her, and we're going to answer some questions together. But before that, I think there are a couple of things we need to go over. It is the end of the summer, as it were, or at least the mid to the end of the summer. Um... No shade, no secret. It's fucking hot outside. Um, I appreciate you. I love you to the moon and back. Don't invite me over unless you have air conditioning, please, for the love of God. Um, I would love to say I can send a dish if you really just wanted me to bring a dish. I have no problem with that. I can drop that off. But if we're sitting outside and there's not a canopy or a fan going, uh, I can't stay. It's not for me. Um, Certainly, I would love to be inside. I mean, that's the goal. But if we have to be outside, could you have some of those, like, big outdoor fans going on? Uh, there's nothing more uncomfortable than that. And, you know, that makes me think, when I, whenever I think about being outside, I think about, uh, you know, a barbecue, which is, which is, you know, the food is lovely. And I think about uh, the idea of people having their pets. That's my number one favorite thing about going to someone's house is hanging out with their pets usually more than hanging out with them. So if the pets are there, that's going to be a bonus for me. Um, but there's another thing that bothers me a bit whenever I go to someone's home, and that is uh, lawn furniture, specifically those plastic white molded chairs that have like the arms in one position. Um, I thought about this before, and, you know, those are made for what's considered to be like the average person, the average sized person or anyone who is considered to be uh, lighter in weight than the average person. So I would guess that the uh, the index of whatever says that the average if, uh, if the average person is 5'10", they should averagely weigh around 165 pounds. Um, I am 5'9", five, 5'10", five, on a good day, and I do not weigh 165 pounds. Um, and so those chairs are not friendly to me. So if I come to your barbecue, even though I said I wasn't going to go to your barbecue because there's no air, if I come there and you see me standing around one of those chairs and not s being seated at that chair, just know that I'm not waiting for you to invite me to sit down on that chair. I'm consciously acknowledging that I'm not going to sit down in that chair because I want everyone to have a good time. I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable as to what's going to happen when I do engulf the chair. So just be mindful that people of size are aware of the furniture that's around them and what may or may not look best to everyone around and what may cause them to be a little bit more uncomfortable. Um, you know, I don't mind uh, sitting on sitting on a uh, a love seat maybe or or sitting in a chair that doesn't have arms it's kind of like when you go to a restaurant uh, we've talked about this before and people want to give you a booth but you asked for a table like there's a reason for much much of this and sometimes it has to do with people's personal comfort levels um you know so that's why you know if it's just too hot and there's those chairs with those I'm aware of it I usually I have to put feelers out you know I know what your I usually know what your house is going to look like and I can 
sort of get an idea of, you know what, that's going to be the best part for me. That's going to be the best seat for me. I have a lot of people that I'll, that I'll hear say, like, um, I'll hear them on Instagram or, or TikTok, and they're dedicated to fitness or dedicated to really taking care of themselves. And, um, you know, your, your health is, is generally something that uh, uh, is going to keep you living here longer, uh, essentially, for, for many people, uh, that's that's our focus, is, is to focus on health and making sure that we're taking care of the physical body as well as the mind. But um, not all of us are on that same journey, and not all of us got there just yet. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But uh, what happens is a lot of these people will say, oh, I've been so good. I'm having a cheat day, having a fat girl day, because they, I don't know, maybe they ate a handful of chips or something. And for them, that suggest that it's like it's fat girl time but I'll tell you this you haven't really had a fat girl day unless you've broken a white lawn chair in front of everybody at a barbecue so if you think that having some chips is the fat girl day you're really really off because breaking the lawn chair at a barbecue is a fat girl day um not going swimming at the barbecue because you can't find an appropriate swimsuit that everyone's not going to point at that's having a fat girl day um Having a fat girl day is not going to a formal event because maybe you can't find a gown that fits for that formal event. That's a fat girl day. So, you know, having some chips is, uh, on a day when you normally wouldn't have chips, that's more like a privilege you get to have. Uh, not saying you owe anyone else because they're overweight. Just saying, you know, you kind of have to lay out where you are. So if you're at a party and you see somebody not sitting in a chair, but they're just kind of enjoying themselves, don't make a scene and suggest that they sit down in the chair. They, they, they know what chair's there. They're aware of it. There's no need for you to do that. And if you don't have any air conditioning, for me personally, don't fucking invite me over. I love you so much. I'll invite you over to my place. I'll invite you out to dinner and I'll pick up the check. And if we're going out for dinner, we're going anywhere where there are tables and chairs that pull out and lots of parking and lots of air conditioning and lots of options. And with that said, I think it's time to go to break. And we come back, we have an extra special guest with an extra special interview. Welcome back. So I'm so excited because this is one of the people that I had on my dream list. This doll is constantly traveling, uh, but she always makes time to hang out, to see family and see friends. And that's where she's been all week here with us while she's been in town. Please show your love to the one and only Detox. Hi. She is here. Um, you know, the thing of it is, is that I, I didn't think that you would be in town when we were doing these. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you do pop into town very frequently, mm -hmm. but you're constantly working. And it's also very randomly, too. It's always, right. like, super last minute or, like, you know, I am I always negate to plan ahead right. when it comes to, especially, like, coming home to L.A. and being around my friends. And I always try to squeeze in as much as I can and overextend myself right. in so many ways. But when we asked me to do this, I was like, yeah, of course. Well, and that's the thing. is like, it's always hard because... Um, People don't realize that, you know, you live in Chicago. You lived here for forever. Um, and when you do come back to work, work is, in fact, the priority because that's why you're being flown out here. Right. But people think, oh, you were in town. How come you didn't do this, this, and oh, this? Oh, it's very that. But then you get, like, you know, 50 people that you do love and uh -huh. you do want to spend time with. But when you have three days and two of them are work. Right. Where well, are you supposed to do that? Well, you tell them, well, I'll be working at these places. Come see me if yeah. you want to see me. Like, this is, like, the only yeah. time that you'll be able to do it. Or luckily, like, for us, we get to work together so often. Right. So it's like, I know I'll at least I'll see, like, my girls and my gang. And if you want to come to the shows and see us, like, that's probably going to be, you know, the best bet to have a bit of a moment right. with me. Which is, you know, it's kind of a shame because, obviously, I have a big group of friends here that I always want to you know, spend time with. But right. It is what it is. We're busy. Well, I mean, you also have a lot of people here that want to see you that you don't want to see. Oh, that part too. <laughs> <laughs> that part too. Yeah. I'm like, actually, I prefer you not to come to the club. Right, right. Right. You can stay home. But you know, too. I mean, even even besides drag shows, oftentimes you're here for things that are not even drag show related. They right. could be projects that you're currently working on that need your physical presence here for, you know, to move something along yeah. or whatever. So people don't realize that. Yeah, I can't tell you I'm going to be there because. First of all, there's NDAs involved sometimes, uh -huh. or simply 
because I know I can't hang out with you, it's why would I tell too. you? Yeah. Or when they see that you're here or if they find out and like, I can't believe you didn't call. I can't believe it was like, I don't believe have it. time. Like, There's that gaslighting and that guilt. There is that. Uh, a lot of that. And you know, I'm, I always, because I'm sentimental and I'm right. very emotional all the time. I wear my heart on my sleeve. So like, there is a guilt there too where I'm like, I'm sorry that I can't have more of myself to extend to everybody. But I also have to look out for me. Right. Which I think the pandemic has really helped me kind of put that into perspective a lot more. Like, taking the time out to say no to things. Right. And to say no to people. Right. You know, like, okay, well, what are you, like, where's the effort on your part? I'm like, do you know what I mean? I or where's the mean. understanding on your part? I do know what you where's mean. Where's the sympathy there? Well, and that's why we treasure, like, when we when we are able to do stuff, uh, you know, th- there was a time, once upon a time, when we when when everybody lived here, mm-hmm. and we would do Palm Springs all the time. I mean, that was really, and we were, I and I'm not trying to like floss it or throw it out there, like, oh, we did this before anybody. But there was a time <laughs> when a lot of us were working at like two cans, yeah, and we would always get a house, and we would always go to the casino, and we would always just, and and it would always be around Pride. Uh-huh. Usually, we would make sure to do Pride, um, but we. People would say, oh, what did you do for Pride? Well, where did you go? And it's like, we didn't. We didn't. The idea was to just, because it was a time when we could be there, and we maybe were getting work around that, Mm -hmm. but our goal was to just stay at the house. Just to stay at the house. And And barbecue. And barbecue and play games and get in the pool. Right. For like a couple of days. Yeah. And Because we honestly don't, we don't get that often, even like individually. Right. You know? And so to to share those kind of moments with your friends and your closest knit friends, it's, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's fun. And even after we all started getting super busy and traveling so much, we would make a point to do it right every year i'm planning on hopefully doing it this year yeah which That's is so like fun. it's right around the corner well what's right around the corner is halloween and i know you were talking uh-huh. about like wanting to do something really fun that you haven't had the chance to do because you are uh you know if you do not know like not every one of us uh, uh lives in la and not every one of us uh a lot of people have like a like, they, they call it you know i'm uh, this is where i stay uh-huh. where do you stay <laughs> but some people in fact don't just stay somewhere they live somewhere and you have realized one of your dreams which is home ownership it is it's been a dream and a nightmare <laughs> yeah, of course yeah we see it i get to hear it but we also everybody gets to see it yeah so if you haven't seen it please go to my instagram and look at the renovation stories because they start off really great and they end up in nightmare situations right, right. um it's been fun you know i maybe in hindsight if i was like looking to i mean honestly the whole house ownership was kind of a a, a an accident to begin oh, with. Okay. Like it wasn't intentional. It wasn't my plan. Like everything just kind of like fell into place. And I was like, well, I guess this is what's happening. I had no intentions on leaving LA anytime mm-hmm. soon. And um, it's just, you know, something like an opportunity arose. I decided to take it. I, it's been great. I love it. I love Chicago. I love being near my family because it's like as we're getting older, it's yes. nice to have, you know, your, you know, your core yes. familiar unit. And like it's the first yes. time that we've all lived in the same city since we were kids, which is great. Um, but I was not expecting like the nightmare that comes. I mean, it was my first time ever living alone. I've always had roommates right. and an apartments and, um, you know, I bought a fixer upper, which it didn't really need to be fixed up, but I'm bougie and I have expensive taste and I right. wanted it to be my dream home. And now I want to well, burn it, it to the ground. It never needed to be fixed up. It needed to be transformed. It did. It into did. your palace. And yes. I mean, that's, you know, that's, the, even though it didn't start out that way, that's kind of the dream for everyone to have their space. Oh, for sure. Their space, the way they want it to look and the way they want it to feel and the way they want it to smell. And that that's just going to take time. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that you know that. You don't need to hear that from anyone else, but it's just exciting to watch because. It is. It's exciting to do it too. And it's like, obviously like opened up my, you know, I'm a, a creative person. I'm like all about aesthetics. I love that. So it's, it's cool for me to be able to put my like stank on something else that's besides drag and besides mm-hmm. my exterior. You know what I mean? So that's always really fun. Well, that makes kind of a lot of sense because you always, you know, you get labeled, we all get labeled from drag race or drag entertainers as a certain type. Mm-hmm. And so you get labeled as, well, Detox is a fashion queen, so we just expect for her to s- exclusively just look good and only talk about looking good. Right. But the reality is that it does transfer over because the 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 looks are being reflected because you have a passion for decorating as well. I do. You know what I mean? And and, and that's uh, that, that just goes to show that someone who, yes, you are into fashion, yeah. but fashion is in so many ways. In so many ways. It's a way of life. It is. Hello. Yeah. Luxury is a Luxury is a, is a lifestyle, darling, and it's is needed. It? It's necessary. In my life, I feel like it's necessary. It makes me feel good. Of course it does. Yeah. It, like I get a high off of, like, you know, 
shopping and buying things for the house and like finding really cool antiques and mm-hmm. you know you have to come over sometime like what you would, will die what would you say your personal like you would like your home to ultimately look like um very hollywood regency but also mid century modern like the whole like juxtaposition of mm-hmm. clean lines um and also very gaudy things Okay. Like a lot of really cool antique brass pieces, lots of mirrors, smoked mirrors, antique mirrors. I love that. Um, I don't know. It looks like the end goal, I think, is going to look like some kind of either like super villainous. I love like, that. Yeah. You know, the super villainous layer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. But every room has a theme. I have like my, my guest room and my office is the Nagel room. So it's all like pink laminate furniture. Everything's mm-hmm. from the 80s. Very like ruthless people. Nagel's on every surface of the wall. Um, lots of brass and chrome and mixed metals. Do you have uh, like like you know when people do artwork of you? Do you do you feature any of that? I don't have any of that up yet, but I have say I save everything. So I have bins and bins full of like letters and collages and artwork that I love. And then so I've not just a bin, like bins and bins. Bins and bins. Oh, so there's more bins than one. on bins on bins. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. I need a room. Do you just stack for them? That. Like, oh, there's so many. Mm-hmm. A lot of people love you. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm loved. I am loved. Um, well, you know what? Is something I was thinking about. Um, and this this conversation will last forever, and I want it to last forever. Um. We, this is not a drag race podcast, but it makes sense when people from drag race are here because that's what we fucking do. Right. Um, so it's always something. Well, we've be been part- friends long before drag race. Yeah, of course. But recently, I was like, is detox being erased from drag race history, as they say? <laughs> I feel like I've seen you in an assless gown on Drag Race before other people. A couple of times, I feel. Not that those people were saying that they were the first, because they weren't saying that either. No. But there were, I feel like somebody, one of the judges was like, "Um, I've not seen that on here before. Yeah, I haven't seen the latest episode, but I know what you're referring to, because Uh, my my DMs and my Twitter notifications have been blowing up. So Michelle Visage... (laughs) You have to. I actually texted her after this. Right. I'm like, girl, I haven't watched the episode. Right. And she was like, what did I say? I was like, well, clearly you haven't seen an assless dress on the show. Right. And she she was, did. I will say she did say gown. So she may have meant like formal, like gown to the floor. Oh, I did that too, though. You did. I did that You too. did. You did. <laughs> Would you, uh, do you think you have, do you have more than one assless, assless gown? More than one assless dress? Oh, yeah. I have several. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know. You got, you, if I, I spent all this money on the ass, I might as well show it off. When you're at when you wear something assless, have you always been gasless? <laughs> it's actually funny that you mentioned that because I have this new assless dress I've been wearing on the road, and I swear to God, every time I put it on, BJ, my assistant, he could tell he's like, "Uh oh, it's happening!" Right? I'm like, the minute I put the dress on, like the minute the heel goes into the bottom of the dress, I'm like, I have to shit. What am I going to do oh my God. in this assless dress? Yeah. And like, what if I start getting the the gas grumbles? This is disgusting to talk about on this podcast. This is real. This is where it gets It's real, real life. It's real life, people. Mm-hmm. Everyone has gas, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's always in the back of my mind, like, I'm going to, you know, go do like some sexy move and try to get someone to tip me in my ass and just completely shard on their fingers. Good. So I'm just bye. waiting for that day. Now I just like stock up on Imodium anytime I wear it. Yeah. Just in case. It hasn't happened. No, not yet. It hasn't happened. Not yet. You have to, as we get to a certain age, we do have to stock up on Imodium. It's true. It happens. The multi-symptom one, though, because it helps with gas relief. Did you know that if you buy um, extra strength Excedrin or Excedrin migraine? I live on that one. They are the extra strength, or the, the migraine one is $3 more than the other, but they have the exact same ingredients when you read the packaging. You yeah. would know that. I know that. You would know that. Yeah. Very Delta is a podcast for a woman who has a coupon. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> and we are back. Uh, all right. So I'm here with Detox. And I want to kick off this segment with, like, a fun exercise. Okay. Okay. I'm out of shape, so. Yeah. Well, clearly it's not a physical exercise. I wouldn't put that on you if I'm not going to put that on myself. And I'm never (laughs) going to do anything. But sit here. So this is more, like, of a mental health exercise. Okay. Okay. I do these all the time. Everyone knows that I do these. And they're like, 
what is wrong with her? There's something wrong with her. <laughs> she has too many expectations. What's right with her, though? Yeah. So I love to let people, like, just know what's going on on, on Instagram Live. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, this has just happened. I know it's unrealistic for me to expect more, but this is just the way it fucking is. So I want you to give us your version of an Instagram Live rant about... <laughs> <laughs> because you know they listen you can have 60 seconds you can have 15 you can have as much as you want you travel so much i do and there's always always it's always something. something it's always fucking something and it's just gotten worse i think over the pandemic because everyone's like short staffed uh -huh. too that it's just like shit's getting lost left and right but but <clears throat> you are a i am a Multi-millionaire, multi-million miler. Uh-huh. Um, and there, with with those benefits, I do get treated a little bit differently. I have a lot of perks. I get a lot of assistance when I need it. But I will tell you, they lost my motherfucking bag in May of 2020. And I still have yet to get the bag back. And there were custom Gucci shoes in there, custom costume, like probably 15 grand worth of stuff in this bag. Yeah. That... They lost. They have no idea where it is. And then they said, well, we can give you $3,000, and that'll cover everything. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's not going to cover shit. So let me tell you what. I'm going to. We're, well, I actually can't say that because we are in the middle of a legal process with them. But <laughs> maybe we'll cut that part let out. You what airline let, employees. Me let me tell you what, airline employees. Don't lose our things. Yeah. This is my livelihood. And what really fucking sucks, and a lot of these new, like the newer girls, too, is, are really feeling it lately because they've been traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's getting back to normal. Um, and they're losing their shit left and right. But when you're going from city to city to city and having to do these fucking gigs yeah. and you need those things to do your job, um, a, a $100 check isn't going to do anything when it's like I have to go buy an entire new makeup kit right. and costumes or borrow things or, you know, rely on the kindness of strangers, which I've done that before. And I borrowed a dress and it broke me out in hives. So, you know. Oh, my goodness. So that's another uh, lesson for queens out there is wash your shit. <laughs> yeah, this is the time of year when people really do need to especially be diligent about washing their clothing, their drag, their tights. All of that stuff is so gross. You know, I've actually been very fortunate. I have not uh, had any of my things misplaced by the airlines. But, you know, if you go, if it's a mathematical thing, because if you really think about it, um, how many times a year do you think you travel out for uh, on an airplane? Oh, Jesus, I have no idea. I mean, at least 50% of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. I travel out of town maybe three times every two years. Uh, to a gig. That's how often I'm in demand. And so uh, it's very easy to to keep my things in order because, you know, mathematically, you're probably going to lose more if you travel more. That's true. So that's why I don't go anywhere because well, I don't I also... want you to lose my fucking shit. <laughs> I also like, I mean, it's pretty morbid, but I'm also like, I have come to the like calm realization that I will probably die in a plane crash just because of how often I'm on the plane. Okay. <laughs> and I feel like it's just statistically it's there. Uh -huh. Like I'll just go out violently somehow in a plane crash. So hopefully that doesn't happen. How often on a plane do you um, not have an alcoholic beverage? Um, I don't think I've ever not had an alcoholic beverage on really? a plane. Really? Yeah. Do you have a problem? I probably do. Yeah, I'm drinking. I'm drinking Kim Crawford wine right now out of a mug. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, listen, we only have the best here. It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. We clearly you didn't get my rider. <laughs> right, right. Um, <clears throat> so they did. They do not have your bag. People need to wash their tights. You will break out in hives if you borrow dresses. You will break out in hives if you borrow dresses. Um, p potentially monkeypox. You know, that's uh -huh. the thing now. I guess apparently. Uh -huh. Um, so who knows? Who knows? What um. If you were out of town and you've been out of town where you don't have your suitcase and you were left to your own devices with $200 and an afternoon to put together two things to wear at the club, one of them you could repeat because you're going to wear it for the meet and greet right. as well. Uh -huh. well. Like, where would you go and what do you think you would throw together that would be effective? Oh, I'd cancel the gig. You'd cancel the no. gig? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, it's happened before and I just had to go to the mall and, you know, spend a bunch of money. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a girl with luxurious taste, too. And right. it's also, it's hard to, like, find things that are, I have a weird animated body. It's like, not everything's going to work. Mm -hmm. But That's there's a, a great place, actually, that I love called Akira. And I get a lot of my little, like, meet and greet dresses and they have, like, fun club kind of, it looks like drag costumes. Right. Um, and it's actually pretty reasonably priced. So. Right. Hopefully I'll find like a, a mall that has that and then go to the Walgreens and get all of my wet and wild beauty supplies. You know what's interesting, I think, for us um, th that, it, that is similar is that um, because we were dream girls, we worked at dream girls for so long, we'll always be dream girls, um, we have a lot of numbers that 
really are not dictated by what we're what wearing. What we're wearing. Uh-huh. And that's important, mm-hmm. I think. A lot of people are not knocking it, because if I could do it, I would. But a lot of people are like, oh, I'm doing my big Ariana Grande number right. or my this, that are specific to that look. Mm-hmm. But we do, you know, you are you are known for a number that always hits all the time. And that, of course, is the mannequin number. And then it goes into another. But you can be any kind of mannequin. Yeah. Really? I, I've actually done that before. Um, I think it was a town in D.C. years ago. They lost my luggage and I didn't get it on time. And so I had to go to the mall. And I used, I went to Mac and got all new makeup. And so I used the Mac shopping bag as my purse. Perfect. <laughs> and, and whatever little borrowed dress that yeah. I had there. That's you know, smart. I yeah. mean, that's that's what we do. That's what we, uh, that's who we've always been. We're resourceful. Yeah. Queer people are resourceful. Like especially that. drag entertainers. Yeah, I like that. Have you done a Dream Girl show lately? I'm doing one on Wednesday. I'm so excited in are San you? Diego. Yeah. yeah. I was like, can I please be in the opening? It's been so long since I've done a Dream Girl show. Do you remember that we would always wear like the matching dresses uh-huh. for everything? I have a picture of us. I think it's you, me, Dolly, and Morgan. And you guys had those ones that would be like, it would be like a the one little strap. asymmetrical. The uh huh. But this, these were like the long ones with a ruffle down the front. Oh yes, black. yes, yes. It was Halloween show. Uh huh. So of course we had to wear black dresses. Of course. You know that's the way. That's and then I had to do Halloween mannequin because right. every every holiday has do you a have mannequin Halloween number. numbers. Um, a few. I do like my bride of Frankenstein. I do all the time. Of course. Anything that's like dark and smoky and sultry and sexy that I can just throw a black lip on and be gothic. Whatever. Uh one of my favorite. You're the queen of Halloween, though. No. You are. What? Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Disney numbers that you used to do was Sleeping Beauty. Oh my God! Yeah. It was so because I always feel like the funniest numbers are the ones that are like super sublime and right. you're like, is this really happening right now? And it's so stupid. And it was just, but it was ridiculously good. <laughs> it was so good. I should bring that out. Sometime. I used to know a Queen that used to do. Um, oh, I forget where she's from. But she used to do that song, The Hustle by Van McCoy. Oh my God, sing it for me. Oh yeah. Duh. Right? And so she would come and she would sit on stage and she would have like a, her cigarette and a, and a glass and then the song would be playing and she would just be nodding along and then when the lyrics came through she would go, do the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just known for this number. She, I want to say she's from like Oklahoma. Maybe she's from Kansas. She's from the Midwest. But it's those kind of numbers that are like, you have to be the right person. You do. Well, you I'm, have to have like charisma enough to do it. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like, there's a, a command. If you're just going to stand on stage and do nothing, you at least have to have some kind of right presence. Right. You know? And that's the thing. Like I said earlier, people will say like, "Oh, detox is the fashion is a, is a fashion queen," and there's nothing wrong. No, you, with being you said that. it right. It was the the <laughs> the fashion queen. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's a wonderful it's wonderful to be known as having a strength. But it would be really nice if people would realize that there is so much more. Yeah, well, that, it's so layered. You it know? is layered. Like I consider myself a comedy queen. I consider yeah. myself all kinds of things because, you know, I don't have to be pigeonholed. No, nobody does. No, you know. I don't know. I yeah. mean, some of these, some of these girls. That is kind of all they can do. But when are you going on All Stars? That's what the kids. Oh, never, know. never. Kids are I'm good. I'm kids cool. Are I would totally do like if they did something that was not in this kind of format that it is. Like they need to switch it up a little bit. If they did like a real world road rules challenge situation, or a bad girls club where it's like everyone's in a house and it's like or a Big Brother situation. Yep. Like that, I could be on board with. But like you know, I don't want to do all of that. Like. Silly mini challenges and acting challenges and right like no I mean it's drag is much more than that I think we've all kind of cemented our place in that realm right so let's do something fun and different I mean I even remember like uh, maybe like a y- two seasons three seasons after being on Drag Race uh, Mimi I'm First was like hosting these shows and she would have RuPaul's Drag Race bad girls and right and, and it really she really was like booking the people that sort of had this bad reputation. But we're not really. I mean, none of our, no, none of the people that have these bad reputations are really ultimately that bad. Right. Some of the people that are being elevated are the ones that are fucking are the assholes. fucking assholes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, people remember you. Let's ex- name them. Yeah, people remember you exclusively as to how they knew you from television, right. and they won't they won't change. And they won't. Opinion. Yeah, they won't no. see you any other way um, besides being a bitch drinks on stream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else did Mimi yeah. did that? But she did another thing. Oh, she did a night called Big Fat Losers. And it was like, stop. It was just like all big girls. And people turn for it. You know, the, these theme, theme sort of things. Like yeah. you said, a bad girls. Uh, you know, I, but unfortunately, a lot of the people that are also considered bad girls became bad girls after they left after Drag they Race. Left. Uh-huh. And those are the ones that people are like, oh, I want to see them go off. They want to see me go off. <laughs> they want to see me go off. Uh, yeah, they want to see me go off. Do they want to see you go off? I want to see, see you go off. off. Let's, uh, let's take a break. 
Yeah. We'll go on. Let's go on. And we're back with Detox. Um, we've just been shooting shit about what we always shoot the shit about. Essentially, we start a topic, and then we start talking about something else. And right. And we never really right. resolve anything. No. It's fine. It's fine. Then we move on. Or you know, where we're at. Uh, they want to see us go off. Yeah. Yeah. They want to see us work. Um, you know in the podcast we always have where we, like, answer letters, mm -hmm. which we call the annals of the inbox or the anals uh -huh. of the inbox. If you will. Um, yeah, you know, anal. Um. So we have a couple of letters okay. that I want to read. People have, they knew you were coming. Oh, Lord. I want your opinion. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with this one. Let's see. I still don't have my letter opener. I say this every week. I have, oh, no. I have a letter opener uh, at home. Have I brought it? Can we fly that in, please? Yeah. Bring it to the set. Those are industry terms. Yeah. <laughs> fly it in. Stepping in. Stepping in. All right. Uh, the first one is from Ricardo. Okay. Hello, Delta and Detox. I'm a big fan, and I've followed your careers since Drag Race. Um, also, I knew Raja from the 90s at Oz in Buena Park. Ooh. I went to UCLA in the late 90s and the early 2000s and was part of the Latino LGBTQ plus community called La Familia, and I believe Raja knew members from our organization. Either way, I love all of your guests, and I love you and Raja. My question is, have you, either of you, ever experienced an embarrassing moment on stage? Thank you, chicas. Um, I mean, I'm sure. Several, I mean, I've fallen on stage. Mm -hmm. My tuck has popped on stage. My balls have fallen out on oh, stage. Both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't use enough spray adhesive that night. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like it's, it's, so, it's, a, it's a thing that's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Nothing, like, too traumatizing, I don't think, though. I think we're also, like, we can laugh everything off. Right. Where it's like, oh, that's silly. Right. And you can make it part of the gig, too. Right. Like, oh, laugh with me, everybody, instead of laughing at me. Well, and I think, yeah. I mean, I think what people are waiting on, and there's always those people in the audience that are like, uh, I knew this was going to happen. Uh -huh. like they want to see What they want to see is, uh, they don't want to see you go off. They don't want to see you go off. They want to see you be so surprised that you can't come back from Right. It. That you run away going, <laughs> I'm not going back at all. Right. It's like it's like um like horror porn or right. whatever they call it. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's like, let's just watch this car crash really quick right. and see what happens and see how they respond to it. And the fucked up part is you know with the audience, there's ninety-nine percent of the people that are like, I feel awful for you. And the second you get up, they're like, Man, I don't think I would have been able to do that. Right. So they're basically always in your corner. For sure. They know you're embarrassed. They hope, actually, they generally hope when something like that happens that you're okay. Right. Well, that's all they're thinking about. They're not making fun. Like, but but as far as like for me, yeah, I've I've fucking eaten shit a million times. One time at Rage, you know, we would do like don't see, like if you don't see uh -huh. something, we would walk in a circle. Oh, and was, they had that lip on the stage. I was walking in the circle and I walked completely off. No. <laughs> I just completely off. And I was like, well, now I'm stuck here until the show's over because oh. the only way to like get off is to just either jump back, back on stage <laughs> or open the curtain and walk out through right. the crowd because there's nothing there. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's, I mean, what are you going to do? That's it for me? Yeah. Remember, I used to do that number. Well, I still do it, but um, this like, it's called bilingual. And I always like uh -huh. do it on a chair and like straddle the chair and blah, blah, blah. And I remember. It's happened a couple times, actually, but the, um, the chair that was provided for me was, like, a folding chair, and so it wasn't, like, super sturdy, and when I do, like, one of my moves, the whole thing just collapsed, and so there I am, like, caught in the chair. No, no. <laughs> like this, like a, uh -huh. a dead deer that just got hit by a car, <laughs> and I ha you have no choice but to laugh. Right. You know? Right. Because it's hilarious, and you're like, you know... But you're also like you were in the middle of like the sex scene. Oh her. right, like very like feeling all of the oats, all of the oat milk, uh -huh. all of those things, and just like chewing it, and then literally did chew <laughs> it into the fucking stage. Yeah. yeah. What's the what's the play? You know, I especially as I get older, I um I get super particular about like how how I look to people on stage or uh -huh. how much space I take up as far as like, what does that look like? What are the optics of that? And I love to watch one of the most successful things ever, which is the Roscoe's viewing parties. Uh -huh. I love watching those. Yeah, they're fun. I think they're great. I think it's raw. I think people get like some real opinion. I think and they I, need you there. I see. And the thing is, I thought, you know, one day maybe someone will ask me and I thought, I have to say no. 
<laughs> I can't go sit in that little piece of furniture <laughs> the, and have people furniture. look at me like this. And they're like, <laughs> all they're going to see is knees and chins. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, I need a different... Couple nose hairs. I need a different setup. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that setup. But I applaud all the girls that do it because it's wildly successful and they have a wonderful time. But I think to myself, oh, it's going to be a hard pass for me. <laughs> Not that I've been asked. Not that I've been asked. But if so I was... Don't, so don't encourage them to book you. Don't just encourage say no. Sean to message me back okay. about anything. Okay. Uh, because I'm good. You heard it here first, Sean. Because that's when you're going to see me go off. <laughs> um, no, okay, so we have another letter. Uh, let's see what this is. I'm nervous. I, are you nervous? Are you Ooh. having a little... What kind of wine is that, anyway? What's the flavor? Kim Crawford white wine. I don't know. It's like a Chardonnay, maybe? White wine. Who is Kim Crawford? I have no idea. Oh. Not not a clue. I will say I have a friend. I was actually just telling Dipper this story, who apparently like just loves Kim Crawford wine. And we were on vacation last year for for his I think it was his 30th birthday or something. And we went it was an all inclusive resort, one of those like little cute places that we go. And we were like, let's treat ourselves nice and we'll go to like the steakhouse for dinner tonight. And they had this big wall of wine. And he sees the wall of wine and he goes, Oh! Kim Crawford. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> and I was like, really? Uh uh-uh. <laughs> So now, anytime I see Kim Crawford wine, I have to take a picture and send it to him because it's like, ooh. And you just go, ah. Kim Crawford. Ah. You have to send Kim a, Crawford. A voice oh, I did. Yeah. We were talking about this porn recently where it was like, uh, uh, like a gangbang uh-huh. and there were two guys on one guy on the bed and then all the other guys were like prepping themselves watching uh-huh. and the bottom was like really really taking it and then the uh, somebody one of the guys goes oh, girl <laughs> she just calls it out like oh girl like wow Ooh, get it girl okay so this letter is from Joe Dear Delta and Detox, I know how you queens style and dress yourselves up. You guys have taken drag to a higher level that's not achievable by a mortal. I just want to ask how you guys develop such good taste for your personal looks and makeup. Who were your strong influences and how did you define your taste as you go along uh, longer in the industry? Who are some of your style style icons? for? Well, I mean, obviously Terry Uh McGlair, all the supermodels of the 90s, Linda Evangelista, um, Patrick Nagel, uh, comic books. Like, I'm a huge fan of X Men, and I always like loved the trading cards, and like had a huge collection when I was a kid. And I always loved the aesthetic. Right. And, like everything was very like angular and sharp, and you know, over exaggerated. Um, yeah, lots like of that. like pops of colors and craziness. Neon. But what about like as you were coming up too? Like we we've talked about this before with other guests, but. We are all so shaped and influenced by so many uh, members of that do drag, but are of the trans community. Oh yeah, I mean that's truly what like what we looked to. Yeah, that's how I learned how to do it. It's how I it. learned how. It's how I learned how to like hold myself on stage. It's how I learned how to like my one of my favorite drag performers of all time is Monica Monroe, who's a former Miss Continental and amazing. She's you know from Chicago. Um, if you don't know who she is, I I. I boost that bitch all the time because I would study these VHS tapes of this guy who I was living with at the time. They had like all these different pageants that were on VHS and I would just watch them over and over and over and see like her and Mimi Marks and Cezanne and like all these. And plus, you know, being from Florida where predominantly the entertainers there were all trans women. Right. And so going to the Parliament House and seeing, you know, Sierra Fox and uh, learning how to host from Carmela Marcela Garcia, RIP, who was, you know, right. such a legend. Like, I'm very spoiled in the regards of my upbringing right. from there. And so I've taken a lot of influence from from those girls. Right. And thank you. It's such an interesting space to be in because we, we, were, we are shaped by those women. And we are, um, you know, uh, we come from a time when we didn't really, those conversations of, like duality or all of that stuff. They just didn't happen yeah. because we didn't have a social media platform before it happened. We just watched it happen. Right. And that's where we come from. And there from. also wasn't, you know, there wasn't the conversation about it. There wasn't right. really a dialogue about it. Right. It was like, you're you're this, you're that, you're trans, and that's it. There wasn't like as much fluidity and, you know, as broad of a spectrum as there is now, right. which is amazing. Yeah, and two, I mean, we're talking about like uh, uh, style, like icons or whatever. We 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 come from there, like what we are interested in sort of intersects a little bit, because right? As much as you love like the fashion, uh, the the design houses and stuff that that came through the eighties and nineties, and artists like uh, Patrick Nagel, like I always loved so much all of the like women who had talk shows, right? And, and uh, like designing women, designing women, and, well. 
uh, all uh, it, the TV show It's a Living, uh-huh. like those kind of things. Like I always loved the like you match your earrings to your ring and like you change your hosiery for the evening. Like I loved all of that, yeah. and it sort of does intersect in a way because you know you're talking about the people that design clothing for a lot of these people, right? And then I'm talking about sort of the characters that those people played. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I well, it's I also can... like so camp too, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything was like again super exaggerated and like. Just everything had a flourish. Right. And you've always been the queen of a flourish. Like we love you love that. the little dotting every I and crossing every T. We love that. Yeah. I love that too. I um and I always think about too, like f- fragrance. Like right. because we're so we're fragrance snobs. That seems like such an eighties, nineties thing. It does. It really like does. having a signature scent and like having like that's actually one of my favorite things about um traveling and meeting people. They're like, Oh, we knew you were here because we could smell you before mm-hmm. you even like as you were before we even saw you, we smelt you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so like sickening. There's just something that's like fierce about that. I remember for a while you you would wear like womanity uh-huh. exclusively. And uh there were times when uh I would wear it and I've and I've had people say, I totally smell detox here. Uh-huh. And and I've <laughs> and I thought like They've only worked with her one or like these are might, might be people that she's only met one or two times, but it makes that mark on her. Right, her. and I'm like that is detox scent. Like, and you is... you do the same thing that I do too. Like you spray your hands, uh-huh. you spray your hair. It's like because it's like it's a whole experience. Right, like, it's all I want all five senses going on. Right, at every time, you know. Right. So it's like yes, you collect the dollar, but they can smell your hand because right. the perfume is there. And it's the the glance that you give them and the nod and like the little shoulder moves. I think we talked about always gagging for like um like trans performers in the eighties and nineties who would like pick up their money and they would like organize uh-huh. it as they're performing. Right there. Oh, that's so gag so cunty. It's, it's so, so pretty, it's, right? It's fierce. Well, if you'd like to send a letter to me uh, to read on the show, please email me at readmedelta at gmail.com. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having answering me. These questions and like for real, for real. I like you know. Well, this is a limited series, and I was like, I just have a dream list of people. May not happen, may happen, and like it was meant to be because I know that you were gonna go out of your way to make it happen, and you literally did. I know go out of your way to make it happen, so I appreciate. I it. I would do anything for you because I, I know love you, you have. You always have. Um. So yeah. Why am I you getting for... emotional? Well, because <laughs> you're gonna die in a plane crash, like you said. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right. Thank you so much for listening to Very Delta and a special hello to everyone watching the show on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Very Delta comes out Mondays right here on the Very That Podcast feed and on YouTube. And if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe to make sure that you do not miss any new episodes. If you'd like to send me a question, comment, or any type of communication, email me at readmedelta at gmail.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram uh, at Delta Work. And where can people find you on social media? Um, at the only G Talks everywhere. And do you still have a back page ad? Well, you know what it is. Yeah. So you know where I am. You know where to find me on Eros, actually. Damn. <laughs> we'll be right here next week where we like to keep things very Delta. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom, hosted by Delta Work and produced by Maxwell Esposito. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing and sound design by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 